Come on. All right, thank everybody for coming tonight for a little community meeting uh, about their EMS. Uh, I passed a sign-in sheet around. Make sure everybody gets signed in on that sign-in sheet for me, please. Uh, we'll get accountability. Uh, plenty of links still left. If anybody wants anything to snack on while we uh, have this little set to. Uh, Plenty, I think we got a pretty good turnout for the first one. I mean, we're going to have more than one, but uh, I see some faces that really need to be at this meeting, and uh, we're going to we're going to go forward with that. Uh, I guess I'm going to introduce some some visitors from Jasper County first, and uh, Sheriff Burby, uh, Chief of Police Will, Colton Haver, Constable, uh, Jamie Gunner, Beach Grove Fire Chief. Running for hospital board, uh, Mr. Northworthy on the hospital board, uh, newly elected county commissioner uh, in Deweyville. So, if everybody uh, give me a few minutes, I'm gonna try to get through this best I can. Uh, we got Katie and Amos here, uh, Allegiance is here, Air Rescue is here. Uh, I want everybody. To, I'm gonna try to get the community up to speed of what we're dealing with on a daily basis uh, and how we're trying to address the situation. Uh, we got a bad problem and it just didn't stop. This has been going on. I've been in the department 17 years. I've been chief 14 years. Same problem. It's never changed. Up and down. It's kind of like the stock market. It'll get better than it'll fall off. It'll get better than it'll fall off. Well, I'm tired of the fall off. It's time to fix the problem. This has got to stop. We, 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 and this is community-wide. Uh, stand by just a second. Uh, anyway, we, we've got to put a stop to this somehow, some way. Uh, we've got some ideas that we're trying to work on. Can't tell you that it's going to work, but we are working on it. Uh, we 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 got the drive behind us now. We're not going to stop. We're going to we're going to figure out a solution. One way the uh, response time, availability of ambulances. This has got to stop. Plain and simple. There's no excuse for it. Uh, and, and as a community, as a county, uh, between Luke and Jasper County, there ought to be a fix. It's way more complex than what the public really sees the problem is. I mean, this is a really complex deal. Uh, and it's not going to be an easy fix by no means. Uh, and there's going to be some people get mad. Some people are going to be glad. But, I mean, that's, that's come with the program. Uh, so, I mean, I'm going to go over a few calls that, that, for instance, what we've been dealing with here just very recently. Uh, in one day, Three weeks ago, my first responders to see this meeting tonight was on scene a total of three hours and 55 minutes in one day waiting on analysis. Regardless of the problem, uh, it's unacceptable. Plain and simple, it's unacceptable. There's no excuse for it. Communication is the number one problem that I have found, and I've, I've been on top of it pretty hot and heavy every day. On the phone, emailing back and forth, uh, running call logs, keeping up with my call logs. The biggest problem I see right now is communication from our dispatch to that dispatch back over here. It's, it's too big of a circle on the dispatch. We got to narrow that down to where it's only, we're only making one phone call. One phone call to get EM messing right. Once you make that first phone call, and they have to make another phone call, and then they have to turn around and get a hold of us, we're, we're talking seven to nine minutes. That's seven to nine minutes. We could have done been moving if, if somebody would, uh, I mean, the communication would be better. Uh, that, to me, that, that is a big downfall. Uh, second to none, I mean, safety and health is, should be number one priority in the county. It don't matter. Safety and health should be, you should be worried about the community first. I mean, you got to take care of your people. 
We got the people's got to help us take care of the people. Ninety-five uh, percent of the entities they call nine one one in Newton County. What happened? Okay, don't take all of you, just a couple of you. Uh, Y'all stand by, my first responders are leaving to go to the ATV park on the other side. Okay. Uh, Alright, back to what I was talking about, about the 95% of the 911 calls were to the entities in, in, in Newton County. Only 5% of that pay their bill. The other 90% never pay their ambulance bill. How did, you can't expect an ambulance to survive if they're not getting any monetary back from the county. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's not only, like I say, it's not just a county official problem, it's not just my problem, it's everybody's problem. This has got to be fixed. So, we got to come up with a solution. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about a solution six months from now or a year from now. I'm talking about right now. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to stop. Chief Gunner's not going to stop. We're going to hold your feet to the fire. Everybody. I don't care. From top to bottom, we're going to hold your feet to the fire. This has got to be fixed. Uh, we had a wreck out here on 63. Been about three weeks ago. Pretty bad wreck. My first responder stayed in the cab of a truck holding bandages on the man's head to stop the bleeding. We waited an hour and eight minutes on the ambulance. That's unacceptable. Regardless, that's unacceptable. That's got to stop. I mean, I'm just being honest, it's got to stop. Uh, people's lives are on the line. Uh, and us as a first responder group, fire department, when we're on the scene, uh, we're doing CPR. I don't know how many of you in here have done CPR. But when you do it for 45 to 50 minutes waiting on a unit, you're burnt. I promise you. If you run more than one CPR call a week, you're done. I mean, you're, you're pretty much useless to the group until you regain your strength. Uh, it's pretty bad. So, if I'm standing there and I'm having to tell a family member five minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes, that's unacceptable. If I call the dispatch and say, what is the ETA on my ambulance? I want an honest answer. We're all grown. If it's going to be 30 minutes, you tell me 30 minutes. If it's going to be 45 minutes, you tell me 45 minutes, we're doing something different. Plain and simple. I mean, it's just, we're, 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 we're bad aggravated about it. Uh, we've been, we're, we're, we've, we've got to get something, I mean, ASAP. This has got to stop. Uh, so, We've been working on some stuff, uh, more or less Jamie and him. They've been making more of the meetings than I've been able to because of the work schedule. I'm going to try to make the rest of them. Uh, they have been working on some stuff. Like I said before, I can't promise you it's going to happen, but we are working on it. Uh, we, we're the voice for you right now, for the community right now. Uh, and this, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I can stand up here and preach about it all night long, but it's, I mean, the main word is it's unacceptable. Plain and simple. Uh, as far as being able to communicate with the ambulances, we can't pick up our handheld and talk to an ambulance. I've, I've never known the ambulance to be able to talk to me on the radio. That's unacceptable. We ought to be able to talk directly to the med unit. And by being able to talk directly to the med unit, That'll stop some of the communication problems of having to pick up this phone, call dispatch, hey, get me an ETA, and the dispatch has to pick up a phone and call their dispatch to get me an ETA. That needs to stop. We need to be able to communicate on the regular. That's what we got before. Stand by me. Uh, it's a... Uh, Hey, I'll mute them. Just see what it is. Mute Mine's them. not coming through. It must be pretty bad. Share some. So, go listen to it. See what it is. Let me know. Uh, just 
And like right now, I mean, we're a little volunteer fire department in a little one more town. We're busy. Uh, we're real busy. Uh, we answered 298 calls last year. No, 298 medical calls. We had 396 calls. 298 was medical. And you have me right there. So, I mean, really? I, 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 mean, I don't know how to be nice about it.
If that ambulance picks you up, you go to Jack Memorial. I have dealt with it time and time again. Family members throw a fit. We want you to go here, we want you to go there. Well, thank you, Mr. Norbert. Uh, and, that, and that's something that we'll deal with when it comes to that point. But, and I've done made it clear to my group, if they get in that ambulance, on a 911 ambulance, if they are not severe trauma, uh, they go to the transfer station. They get transferred from, about from there on a transfer unit, not a 911 unit. There's a difference. If they're trauma, stroke, heart attack, whatever, if they're stable enough, they're going to help out down there and they leave them here on the helicopter. That's the fastest and best way. Send them to a trauma center somewhere on that bird, put that 911 ambulance back in service. Just that quick. Uh, ambulance has been on the scene too long. Lately, last week or two, been pretty good. I have seen in times where they sit there 30 minutes on the scene after we load the patient. That's too long. Get that patient where they need to go, get your urea cleaned up, get back in service. You don't know where that next 911 call is going to come, and you don't know where that other wagon is going to be. That unit's got to get back in service as quick as possible. Uh, you're only running two or three units for two counties, but you stretch thin. And that's what we're running. I mean, and most of the time, on the up and down, they do do pretty good having it on. But we're going to do better. We got to fix the problem. 911 is 911. Transfer is transfer. No question that. That's the way it ought to be. Uh, I, don't know, I mean, I, I don't know how to beat around the bush about it. I mean, I'm pretty straightforward about it. I mean, that's just. If you're a 911 ambulance, you're a 911 ambulance. When they pick you up, if you ain't going to a trauma center somewhere, you're going to Jasper. I've told all my first responders, every one of them know it. We've had a meeting the last three weeks. Biggest thing has been my ambulance service. Hey, if you don't need that ambulance, you let dispatch know immediately. Don't waste that ambulance to come over here. No, we can't deny anybody an ambulance ride. Can't do it. If they call 911 on ambulance, you can't deny it. That ambulance has got to come. But once the first responders get there and talk to them, I mean, they can make a decision. Hey, do you really need this? I mean, if there's a family member, I've seen it 10,000 times. If be four or five family members standing there and really, really, I mean, just being honest, they really don't need to go in the ambulance. When there's a family member standing there, can run over to the emergency room for broke fingernail or, or whatever, stomach hurt. I mean, we don't need to waste the ambulance on stuff like that, but that comes back to the community. That's a community problem. That need, we, the community's got to deal with us on this as what I'm looking, I mean, don't don't waste the ambulance if you don't need to waste it, okay? If, if every family member can take it, let's take it. I mean, I'm all for it. Uh, but if you need an ambulance, you're going to get an ambulance ride. Uh, if they don't get here quick enough, they're going to get a phone call. I'm going to raise cane about it. I have got to the point, I mean, this, I don't got everybody's phone numbers. I'm on top of that again. So, uh, believe me, <laughs> phone's going to ring, text message, email, whatever. I'm calling. Somebody's going to have to talk to me, and I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. A supervisor's going to talk to me. I mean, that, I mean, I'd say I've been here a long time. Uh, and up until just the last year recently, I had another supervisor's phone numbers. I had nothing. I've been chief 14 years. I mean, yeah, it's kind of on me, kind of on them. I mean, they need to do their part in public relations and, and, and get out and visit with the fire departments and, and the first responder groups and see what the problem is. Because we ain't, we, if we ain't communicating the problem with the supervisors, with either animal service, you can't fix the problem. You don't know what the problem is to fix. If your medics are not telling you what the problem is, you can't fix the problem. So, I mean, this is a... People's problem. Plain and simple. Everybody's got to get together on this and make it work. I mean, I can stand up here four or five days and just keep on and on and on. But if everybody don't work together and we don't come up with a solution, we've not got nowhere. I mean, we're spinning the wheels. Plain and simple. Uh, I mean, being professional, I got a big problem with that. When you come out of that unit, them ambulance come out.
come out of the unit and turn back to come out of the unit, EMT, basic, I don't care. They pull up in that unit, when they open that door, they better be professional. And when I mean professional, I mean they better be professional. Don't run around there with your, like you're cheating with your head cut off. I'm not, because I'm going to let you know right then. I will tell you right, right then, if you need to shape up on my scene. Well, no, I'll tell you. I'm not bashful. Ask any one of my firemen sitting here. I ain't bashful. I promise you. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, so, I mean, I'd like to see everybody uh, in uniform with patches on their arms. Uh, be professional. Clean wagons. I mean, everything needs to be professional. You are a professional. You're the, last, you're the last lifeline. I mean, you need to be professional when you pull up. Know what's going on when you pull up. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it where it just makes me want to just shake my head and go around the corner and I ain't watch. I mean, I'm just being honest. I've seen it out of every service. Not just one, not just two. I've seen it out of all of them. It happens. That needs to stop. We have to have professional people. Uh, and the dispatch still. I'm telling y'all, that dispatch still got me irritated some kind of bad. Bad. Uh, I mean, our dispatch, they do a pretty damn good job. I don't know. Young girls down there, we got a couple that, that slap her once in a while, but most of them do a pretty good job. I mean, when I call, they give me what I need, and we, get, we go with it. Problem is, I'd like to see all the animal service have a dispatcher local, not in a different county where they don't know what, what. I mean, if you're not familiar with that county, it's kind of hard to give directions because uh, Google Map ain't always right. And I can prove it right out here at Fallsville. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just telling you, dispatchers need to get a little closer to the action instead of being out. I want to see them close. I mean, and they're at down to one phone call. Plain and simple. Uh, and when you call, I want to say, please hold. I'm calling you on 911. We need an ambulance. I don't want to hold. You need to talk to me. You need to be multitasking. I mean, if you're not multitasking, you're not doing this much job right. Well, I see it. You've got to be able to multitask. Dispatchers, that's our lifeline. I mean, if they're not getting us the correct information, you're not getting the correct information. You're not getting the adequate care you need. That's a problem. Got to stop it. Uh, on the uh, back to the units. I mean, uh, all services. I mean, most of them got pretty decent units. I'd like to see better units. I'd like to see more state of order quickly. Uh, and I know it can happen once there's something right. I mean, I don't, we, we, the people, can't expect them, how services, just to fork out all the money out of their pocket and still run our county without getting anything back out of it. They don't work like that. You go bankrupt for the day and quit. Uh, I understand that. They, I mean, they got the same problem as everybody else. Well, we're trying to figure out a solution on the money bill. Can't tell you nothing about it. We really don't know how it's going to work out. Uh, but we are working on it. I promise you. We are working on it. We are working on it hard. Uh, EMS is right out of work there, just so you will know. And if you're calling. Okay. I just got a text. Info. Y'all are safe. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you, y'all. You may be safe. I don't know who it is. Nobody is. Anyway. Uh, it's 16 minutes right now. I think. No. 14 minutes. So, I mean, just like right now, every time that tone goes off, I take a pen. Even though it tells me on my phone what time it is, I write it down. When I get on something, I write it down. I keep up with the numbers. All it is good or better than the answer. Because I want to know. I keep a daily log of it. Every call we got, I got to rub down. There's a notebook on my desk right now, down there. Got every call in it, every time. I keep up with it all. Uh, and when it comes to the end result, 
when we do get to make that final decision on the uh, amateur service, I mean, that's going to that's gonna play a factor in it. Everything's going to play a factor. Uh, but what right now needs to be fixed is communication with the amateur services and the first responders and fire departments. That's a major problem that I want to fix like tonight. I don't, it ain't going to happen, but that's where I'm at with it. It needed to be fixed a long time ago. Uh, when I go out there that truck, get on that radio, when I holler at the leader of Amherst, I want to talk to the leader of Amherst. Put radios on the trucks last week. It's got your frequency on the line. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Acadian, same way. When I get on there and holler for Acadian, I mean, if I say Burkeville fired Acadian Amherst, I want somebody to answer me. It needs to happen. That's all y'all did, though? All right, all right. Because the, the y'all, we had, y'all had, they had to go outside to look at the phone and all of that. Does that affect all of y'all's communications? Not really, uh, uh, Gwen. Uh, I mean, we, we have pretty good, I mean, decent cell service. And, and our fire tone works on weak, weak signal. I mean, it'll still come through. Uh, they mainly went outside where it didn't blare so bad and echo in the building, but that's absolutely loud. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, there's some places in our district uh, that, that gets real sketchy on radio and cell phone. That, and, and, and I understand that. I really do. I understand that. If that cell phone won't work, I don't expect that radio to work. But if I'm at somewhere where that radio will work, somebody talk to me, please. Because well, I'm going to get angry. Are we supposed to be getting something to upgrade our internet and all that stuff? Because somebody came down here to talk to me at, uh, having to do with this cave building, and I thought they were going to get a grant to upgrade um, internet service and all of that in our county. Well, I can't. I don't have the answer for that, Ms. Gwynn. I really don't. Uh, if it's outside of the red building down there, I don't. I mean, I'm. But that, but that should help. It, it should. Uh, I mean, a lot of times, I stood out here a while ago with three radios, three different radios, and I tried to break tower at Newton. Not near one of them broke tower. Our repeater is in Mayflower. Never works. Never. We can't even talk to the sheriff's office. That's a problem. That's a that's a county problem. It needs to be fixed. Uh, that ain't just that. We got sign line going on in all fields. We yeah. got all fields radios that report back to would be, but they get right here and they won't report it on the yeah. ground. It's uh, I mean, it ain't just y'all. Yeah, they, I mean, there's it, it's multiple issues. Uh. Southeast to the northeast, uh, northwest, and, and 
I don't know if it's better reception that way. I don't know what it is, but I can talk to them further than what I can talk to air rescue coming from Jackson. Don't know what the difference is. Just in the air, I don't know. Uh, but we we got to stop this. Biggest issue with font time, communication, dispatch. I mean, it's all a big deal. This is this is a big deal. Uh, I want to have a community meet to tell some of the community about it. I'm glad that I've got some the constable here. Chief of Police here, Commissioner, due to the election commissioners here. Uh, hospital board was here, Mr. Northworthy, he had to leave to go to another meeting. Uh, I, it, it don't take, I mean, I can take this little group of people right here, and this group of people right here can let 3,000 people know what we talk about tonight. We ain't got to have two or 300 people show up to a meeting. It don't take that. Word of mouth. This group right here can have this all over the community, and they'll know the problem. Find uh, Steve does a pretty good job of documenting everything that, that we do over here, and I give him all the information. I don't beat around the bush about it. If, if he wants to know something, I'll give it to him. Uh, and he does a pretty good job of that. So, uh, Jamie, you got anything you want to add to this? I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Well, come on up here, Chief Gunner. <laughs> I've got to make a phone call on this first phone call. Hey, thank y'all for coming uh, to uh, to the Allegiance and the Acadian people in the room. As you've heard the chief reiterate, he's got your numbers, so you can thank me for that later. I also give him your home addresses. I gave him your spouse's phone numbers. I let him know who your kids are, so he has plenty of ways to get a hold of y'all. Just throwing that out there. Thank you. Because he calls me otherwise, so I gotta get I gotta get the heat off. What a what the chief had asked me to come here and talk to you about tonight is what we're doing in Jasper County and where we're at with that process. So I kind of want to hit on those points. About uh, four months ago, maybe five at the most, uh, we uh, got a group of, of entities together, representatives from those entities in Jasper County to talk about EMS in our area. And when I say our area, I mean specifically the northern half of Jasper County. For years, we have been working off of a rotation system uh, that is antiquated at best and archaic at worst. It is designed, the system that we have in place is designed to fail and it has failed repeatedly. And it's no fault of any particular entity that that system has failed. It's the design of the system in general. The uh, government entities that were represented uh, the city of Jasper, Jasper County ESD4, Jasper County government itself, uh, Jasper Economic Development Corporation, Jasper Independent School District, and Jasper Memorial Hospital were the entities that were on this board that started this process. And we started this process to find a solution once and for all for the EMS situation that has plagued us for years and to try to develop a system that is uh, far superior to the archaic system that we've been using. We are well into that process. Uh, we have uh, met multiple times. Uh, we have identified what the issues are. We know what those problems are. Uh, we've seen the repeated failures of the system in general. And again, I'm not pointing the finger at any provider. Please understand that because at one time, Jasper had four EMS providers, which is uh, absurd for a town that size, for a community that size. But, we have uh, we've identified those failure points. We know why it's happening. We have a pretty good idea how to address it. So to just give you a little bit of background uh, on what got us to that point, uh, pre-COVID numbers are the numbers that we uh, that we crunched and generated. The pre-COVID numbers, which would be 2019, because that was the last normal year, if you would, for EMS. Everything has been skewed a little bit since then. Pre-COVID numbers, there's about uh, on average, about 4,000 calls a year in Northern Jasper County. That's 911 and hospital transfers. We're in a little bit different situation than y'all are in because we have a hospital in Jasper, and that hospital uh, does a lot of transfers out of that hospital to, to facilities that are a higher level of care. 
And a lot of people have the mindset of, well, if it's a hospital and they need to go somewhere else, uh, but they're in a hospital, what's the urgency? Well, the urgency quite simply is uh, those people need that intervention now, not later. So we've been able to manage that successfully, uh, trying to get those people out of there quickly, but we have failed in other areas. The numbers, uh, that 4,000 a year on average, is being covered by two current providers, Allegiance EMS and Acadian EMS. Uh, both have done their best, to their best ability, they've done the job to their best of their ability. The issue that we're faced with is quite simply this, this archaic rotation system that we're on puts one of those providers on 911 duty one week and then it puts the other one on hospital transfer duty that same week. They have an incredibly difficult challenge staffing uh, for that rotation because they have numbers, data that's generated on their end that says you need so many ambulances and so many people to cover those calls. But who knows if those calls are actually going to materialize that way. That's one of the problems we're faced with. So if we have a real slow 911 leak and they overstaff, they have a tremendous expense to incur and no, no revenue to generate. They're already uh, uh, in a bad disadvantage from 911 to begin with. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the nationwide average is about 30% collection on 911 calls. So for those of you that's ever been in business for yourself, just imagine if you only got paid for three out of every 10 calls you ran. Or if you only got paid for three out of every 10 days that you work. That'll kind of give you something to relate to. That's a tough business to be in. The hospital transfers are a little more lucrative. Uh, they get paid a little better on those. So that kind of helps offset some of the 911. But because of this archaic system that we're in and what we're subjecting these providers to do, uh, they have a difficult time staffing appropriately to handle that, not knowing exactly what the call volume might be that week. So we, we asked each of those providers to come into us. Uh, we gave them a, a, a couple of bullet points, probably about 30 or 40, I think, actually, something like that, that we wanted them to address to our group and how they could address that better. So the two current providers came in and addressed us. There was a third provider that addressed us that's not currently operating in this area right now. But all three were unanimous in their, uh, in their belief that the only way to effectively manage this system in Jasper County is to have a sole provider. One ambulance company that is staffed adequately and is staffed according to data collected for a year's period of time. In other words, what is the actual call volume over an annual period? And if that ambulance company, that EMS provider is the sole provider, they can much better uh, staff for these situations knowing what real annual numbers are. The current system, they're on 911 rotation for 26 weeks out of the year, and they're on hospital rotation for the other 26. And no matter how you, you skew the numbers, they're, they're not there, it's, it's, it's all over the place. You, when I broke it down into a graph form, it's just peaks and valleys all over the place. And it's very hard for those providers to be able to accommodate that. So that's a huge challenge, a huge challenge for us. So we've identified what's going on. We know what we need to do to fix it. Uh, we are well on our way to solving our problems uh, with creating this sole provider system. Uh, and when I keep saying Jasper County, I want everybody to please understand that everybody, every meeting we've had about this subject, we have been sensitive to the needs of Newton County because Newton County is serviced out of Jasper County for the most part. Southern Newton County, I think, is serviced out of Orange. Is that right, Sheriff? I believe that's right. But from basically Trout Creek North, uh, I think the ambulances typically would either come out of Kirbyville or Jasper. So we have been incredibly sensitive to the needs of Newton County. We've had this discussion multiple times. Uh, I don't have a solution for you tonight. I, don't, I can't tell you tonight what, what the path forward is. Uh, but I do know what the path forward for Jasper County is, and we're trying to figure out a way to make sure that Newton County does not get left out of the equation. So we're nowhere near finished. Uh, I've had one meeting with the sheriff and Judge Weeks. I kind of gave y'all an update about where we were at. Um, we are progressing forward, but I don't have an answer for you tonight as to where we're going to be at. Uh, I know what we're going to, I've got a pretty good idea of what we're going to ask for in an RFP. 
Uh, we go to the City of Jasper City Council on May the 10th. I think that's the date. If we're on the agenda, I believe we are. And we're going to ask the City Council for permission to move forward with an RFP process. We'll probably open it up for about 30 days, 45 days. I don't know what the time frame is actually going to be at this point. We have to ask the city, the city's been intimately involved in this from the get-go. The city has an ordinance that regulates EMS within the city limits. The hospital happens to be inside the city limits. So the EMS ordinance in the city of Jasper has taken precedent over anything else. And when I say that, a lot of folks in this process did not understand that the state of Texas does not guarantee EMS service. A lot of folks don't understand that. The state of Texas does not guarantee you fire protection. A lot of folks don't understand that. The Texas Constitution guarantees you a few things when it comes to public safety. They guarantee you a sheriff, a jail, and a court. And that's all the Texas Constitution guarantees you as a citizen of Texas. So if you want EMS, if you want fire protection, you can do that at a local level. Most cities, uh, when they organize as a city, when their city charter is voted on by the people and formed, they'll detail within that charter what services that city is going to provide. As an example, with the city of Jasper, they detail the, the law enforcement services, that's where the police department comes from. They detail the fire services, that's where the fire department comes from. And not until 2017 was there anything in there about EMS, and that's when that ordinance was enacted and written and added to the city's code of ordinances. So now that puts EMS on the table. So outside of, of local control, the state does not guarantee you that. A lot of folks don't understand that. They don't believe that. Well, that's the, that's the truth. That's the way it is. So if you want fire service, if you want EMS service, uh, you have to do that at a local level. The, correct me if I'm wrong, this is an ESD in Burkeville. The ESD was formed, I don't know how many years ago, uh, Emergency Services District, ESD. Uh, it was formed for the purpose of providing fire protection. It may have been started as a rural fire prevention district. I don't remember how long it was been. If it was prior to 2003, it was started as a rural fire prevention district. But even as an RFPD, it had the authority to provide EMS services and regulate 911 calls within its jurisdiction, 911 EMS calls. The ESDs are funded prior to 2003 when they were RFPDs. They were funded by a three cent ad valorem tax, up to a three cent ad valorem tax. After the conversion happened in 2003, they all become ESDs, and the tax cap was raised to up to 10 cents ad valorem tax. Uh, when you start saying the word tax, I'm surprised nobody's doing anything happening yet, but uh, when you start saying the word tax, you really you really start turning off some people. They don't like hearing that word tax. I don't like hearing the word tax, but the facts are the facts. So the ESDs have the authority to be in the EMS business under the state statutes. They allow them to regulate calls within their jurisdiction, EMS calls as well as fire responses. And how those ESDs are funded are strictly up to the local people that reside within the boundaries of those ESDs. So if they were a converted rural fire prevention district, they're capped at three cents, that can go up to 10 cents, but it has to be approved by the voters. One of the things that we just did two years ago in Jasper, in ESD4, is we passed the sales and use tax. A lot of folks don't understand how sales tax work in the state of Texas. Sales tax uh, is capped by the state at 8.25%. So meaning every dollar you spend, there can be up to 8.25 cents of tax on that dollar. The best way to explain this, uh, because of the 0.25, everything gets rounded down. But the best way to explain it is if you live in a city, they're more than likely going to be collecting that full 8.25%. 6.25 goes to the state, and 2 cents can go to a local jurisdiction that has had an election and approved that 2 cent sales tax. So if you buy a candy bar that costs a dollar and you're in an area that's collecting 8.25% sales tax, it's going to cost you a dollar eight with tax. If you don't have the 8.25 and you're only collecting the state sales tax, it's going to cost you a dollar six. That's the best way to analogize that and, and get folks to understand it. We passed the sales tax uh, because asking people for a raise in property taxes is more likely than not going to fail before it ever gets out of the gate because nobody wants to pay more property taxes. 
a funding mechanism uh, that, that most DSPs overlook. I think Trout Creek has a sales. Do y'all have a sales tax or not? You don't? Okay. Buna yeah. does. Buna does. Uh, Buna got it first in this area. Buna is an unincorporated city, meaning that Buna is not a city, so there is no city government. Buna, uh, nobody else there was collecting sales tax, so that opened up Buna ESD number one in Jasper County to collect the full two cents available to a local jurisdiction. Went to the voters, it passed. Buna is now taking in about a million dollars a year in sales tax revenue. So what is the benefit of sales tax over property tax? It is sharing the load with people that come visit your area and stop and buy anything in your area, just like that ATV park right down the road. It gives the people that come here to enjoy themselves some skin in the game. Versus shouldering the burden 110% by the taxpayer with an ad valorem tax. Because the ad valorem tax, if you don't own property within the county, uh, you're not giving anything back to the county if you need the county services. If you own property in the county, then obviously you're paying a property tax on that. But y'all are just like we are in Jasper. Y'all have a lot of transient population that comes passing through here all the time, and every time they stop and buy anything, uh, if you were to implement that sales and use tax, at least you're getting some money out of the people that pass through. The, uh, the amount of revenue that we collected and that we've collected year to date, that we collected last year has been a little bit surprising to us. The comptroller's office can give you a, a, a guesstimate on what they think your revenue will be within your ESD boundaries. But the thing that we discovered that we did not anticipate is with COVID, the amount of online sales that were occurring. And with online sales, these big retailers that, that sell online like Amazon and like Sam's Club, some of the big, the big outfits, and I can't really explain this and do it justice, but there's a Supreme Court ruling called the Wayfair Rule. And basically what the, Way, the Wayfair Rule says is that these big online uh, giants can collect the sales tax irrespective of the address and send that money to the state every year. And then the state turns around and doles that money out to every jurisdiction that has sales tax collection based on a percentage. So what we discovered is by simply engaging and passing the, the sales and use tax, we're automatically getting money from online retailers that we never anticipated. Ours doesn't include the city of Jasper because the city of Jasper collects that two cents of local tax. So we're just in the unincorporated areas, northern part of Jasper County. And our uh, sales tax revenue check for the month of April was $82,000. That's, uh, that's a big surprise for us because if you do the math, if every month was $82,000, we would be right at a million dollars a year in revenue. And we had, as a matter of fact, we lowered our property tax rate this, this past year. It went down because of that. So sales and use tax is a method uh, that you can use to help create some funding, potentially for EMS. It is a real possibility. It shares the burden outside of your jurisdiction. It shares it with the people that pass through your jurisdiction. For the areas of Duke County, and I know there are some that have no ESDs, uh, they really need to work hard on trying to establish that. That would be a, a, a heck of a, a benefit. The hospital district in Jasper County uh, comprises precincts one and two. The majority of the people in Northern Newton County, I don't know what the percentage would be, but I would say maybe 75%. If they're transported by EMS, it's gonna to be to Jasper Memorial Hospital. That's the closest hospital. The hospital district uh, comprises precinct one and two of Jasper County. It owns Jasper Memorial Hospital. They have a lease, a lease agreement with Christus, the Christus Southeast Texas Network, and Christus runs that hospital. The hospital district generates revenue from that lease. That's how they operate today. Their tax rate is zero. Uh, there is a potential uh, that if Newton County wanted to join that hospital district, to be a part of that hospital district, that probably is something that could be done, something to consider anyway. Uh, I know Rodney, and I don't want to speak for him, but he just left, but I know Rodney Norsworthy, who's on the board now, has mentioned this to me previously. That is a potential. It doesn't have to be the whole county. I mean, I don't think anybody in Dewey is gonna be going to the hospital in Jasper. They're gonna to go to Beaumont or the Michael. Uh, but you could break it up by precinct. It would just have to be approved by the, the voters of those precincts. But it's a possibility, just something to think about. 
There's another funding alternative that most people are probably going to not uh, uh, like, but it's there. It's creating an emergency services district specific to EMS. So you can create an ESD. You can have up to two ESDs in any jurisdiction. So as an example, there's already an ESD here in Berkeley. There's an ESD at Trout Creek, there's an ESD at Deweyville. I may have missed one or two. But you can actually create a countywide ESD and overlap the boundaries of the existing ESD. You just have to designate that as a EMS only ESD. And then they can charge a tax. Again, we're back to the property tax thing. But they can charge a tax and it can be a countywide EMS system that is developed from that tax. In today's environment, chances of passing that are probably pretty slim, but uh, just know it's an option. Something else that just is brand new to me that I just found out about this week, uh, and it may or may not be a benefit in this process, but we've all heard about that infrastructure bill that got passed at the federal level, that trillion dollar infrastructure bill. I was on the Zoom conference a few days ago, and there is funding within that infrastructure bill that can be related to brick and mortar operations with EMS. So in other words, you can build an EMS station. That is a potential, but uh, a trillion dollars is a lot of money, but that's nationwide. And there's only a very small percentage of that earmark uh, for these type of projects. But nonetheless, they're gonna give that money to somebody. So there's another funding source uh, that you may or may not wanna consider as well. So as we move forward, those are some ideas for Newton County to think about some ways they can generate revenue to potentially fund EMS. Uh, I don't know exactly what we're going to end up with in Jasper County yet. Uh, we certainly have zero intentions of harming Newton County. That is the furthest thing from our mind. So whatever we end up doing, and we will involve Newton County as we progress through this process, uh, but whatever we end up doing, uh, you know, our resources will always be available if they're available. So in other words, if there's an ambulance available in Jasper County and it's just sitting there and we know we've got 911 covered, just like it's being ran today, uh, then we have no issues with that ambulance responding to Newton County. We're not trying to hurt anybody by doing this. But I can't really tell you uh, what the, the, the blueprint of this is going to look like for a couple more months yet uh, until we get to that point. But, uh, but certainly uh, we will involve Newton County uh, when we can and move forward from there. We're looking at midsummer uh, as being our time frame to try to get this to, uh, to completion. So as we get closer to midsummer, I think we'll, we'll be closer to having an idea of, of how we move forward from here and how we make this work. The, uh, the value of the hospital district, I know I mentioned that already, but the value of the hospital district is Newton County residents are becoming patients of that hospital every time you're transported by you. It's not every time, but most of them. So there is a vested interest uh, by the hospital district in being concerned about Newton County because a percentage of revenue at that hospital, a percentage of patients that come into that hospital come from Newton County. So that's something for you to seriously think about. Um, moving forward, I don't know if, if, uh, if that's a viable possibility or not. I know y'all got a, a, uh, a runoff the county judge's election, I think we've got a new commissioner down south and maybe, a, is there another commissioner that's in a runoff? No. No? Okay. Uh, but the powers to be in the county we don't know about that and consider that moving forward. But it would have to be been done by the people. Any questions? The chief had mentioned a lot about radio communications. Uh, we're addressing that now. We're going to have a radio repeater established in Jasper County that will be an EMS channel. It's on the tower north of town. It's on a 420 foot hill. The tower is 500 foot tall, so we've got almost a thousand foot of elevation. It will cover Newton County. It covers Newton County right now with our fire department channel. I can talk on it from here with no issue. Uh, you may not get handheld coverage, but you'll certainly get mobile coverage. So that's coming, uh, hopefully, sooner than later. So we'll actually have a common channel between the counties for EMS to communicate on. We'll be to that point uh, soon, I hope. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna work toward a solution that is one provider. And uh, once we figure out who that provider is, and I, I know I'm telling you a lot of things that I don't know, but once we figure out who that provider is, maybe I can tell you something that I do know. So we gotta get to that point first. And, uh, and talking about what I, what I don't know is kind of a waste of time. But, 
But I just want to give you an idea of, uh, of where this is going and why it's going there and uh, where we hope to be when it's all said and done. Anybody got any questions? Did I miss anyone? You did a pretty good job cheating on It's got to stop. We'll go over one thing real quick, just for instance, what we're dealing with right now in Newton County. First started the meeting, first responders got called out to ATV park. Ambulance on time, no question. Call for a helicopter. The helicopter won't come no closer than Newton. I've got a big helipad at my fire station. Somebody's just an answer to me why the helicopter won't come no further than Newton. I don't understand that. I'm aggravated. That's why I went outside and made a phone call. We're fishing to get to the bottom of it. They're, they're fishing to come through here in just a minute, escort an ambulance to Newton Airport to meet a helicopter that could have landed at my fire station. You know, so which know. company? Which company? Which helicopter? I don't know which service it is. I'm, I'm fishing to find out. Are they going to the airport? They're going to the Newton Airport. They may have to fly high far. Uh, if they're having to fly instruments, they've got to go to the airport. Okay. Or well, they've got to go where there's a beacon, a GPS beacon. Yeah, we're VFR right now. Right. I mean, I don't know what the problem is. I'm going to find out here in a minute. Uh, but uh, Allegiance, Amos will be coming through here in just a minute with an escort in the front, an escort in the back, going to the airport uh, with a patient. So, I mean, I want to know. I mean, that's something I want to know. I want to know why the helicopter would come on up here and land on my helipad like they do religiously. I've got a big, nice hell pad, half a big little parking lot out there. Lights all over it, big sidewalk. I don't understand that. So, we're finna get to the bottom of that. I'm on it right now. Uh, so, I've got first responders on the hamlets with the bed unit. They're, they're on the hamlets right uh, working on it. So, they're doing what they're supposed to. I don't have a problem with it. They're coming through town right now. Uh, so, Thank everybody for coming. I mean, did anybody in this room out here get anything out of this meeting? I mean, be honest. Did anybody in this room get anything out of this meeting about the hammers as far as what we're doing? Did we get anything or not get anything? I got something, that, but I you phrased it. I thought you said thoughts. When? I was thinking. Well, 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 I mean, I'm asking. Okay, as, as, as long as you have a way to understand what we're dealing with and what we're trying to do, I mean, that's what the meeting's about. I know okay. most everybody's not going to understand, but the one that said law enforcement, medical field sitting in here, uh, we understand and we know what the problem is, and it's, it's got to stop. Having meetings after this, it would, it would be nice because I'm sitting here thinking, okay, what's going through y'all's head? of solutions. I mean, you gave, gave well, all the problems. What I want this, the solutions. This. And the list of possibilities, he gave some, several. But what are y'all, what is Brookville looking into? That would help us know what direction well, we need to start talking or going. That's, you know. that's why I call it a community meeting uh, and, and there's going to be some more in the near future. Because I'm going to keep the community involved in what we're doing. Uh, it's not just going to be, I did it. There's no such thing as I and team. Okay? And it's going to take a team to do this. So, not one person is going to get put on the front page of the newspaper and say, I did this. That ain't going to work. Because we're all in it together. Okay? I'm going to be firm about that. Uh, that that's, that's not how this is going to work. Just like I said when we started, this is way more complex than the public ever imagined what this is. Uh, it's got to stop and it's got to be a change in it. It's got, this is, this can't go, keep going. Uh, I've watched it keep going for 17 years. If we don't put a stop, it's going to be another 17 years and it's just going to keep revolving. This has got to stop. Yes, sir, Mr. Yeah, so, you know, I, just, just to clear it up, I am a property owner. I spent a lot of time out down the road. so. I, I'm here as a citizen as much as a commissioner or you know the other officials that are here. But one thing I think that 
this wind? Is that right? Mm -hmm. One thing that might be helpful just for me, if I'm a novice, you know, I'm saying here, I know nothing about what you're talking about, uh, no background in emergency responses, maybe a list of, of the issues, to capture a list of the issues so the next meeting, you know, we have, maybe do that outside of the meeting, of course, but just a list of all the issues, possible solutions, like this gentleman talked about tonight, you know, and then, you know, we, we, get, we capture these, we have this, and what is the next step? So, you know, that would help me as a, uh, as a property owner, this guy right. there. Uh, what I'm gonna do at the next meeting, uh, I mean, I had a decent progress report on how much service for this meeting. Uh, every meeting is going to have a progress report on the Hamlet services, what's going on, run, run, run reports. All that's going to be in the next meeting. It'll be printed out from them. They're going to, I'm going to ask for them and they're going to print them for me. And we're going to have them the way I have the facts, uh, along with the facts they've already got. Uh, and we will have a, uh, a list of everything that, we, that we've done and what we've tried to do uh, and what we're headed towards at the next meeting. Uh, like I say, it, I may wait a month, I don't know, but there will be another meeting at this building about how much service. And I'm gonna continue to have them and continue to put the information out and hope more the public comes uh, until this problem is resolved. And once it's resolved, I'm gonna try to continue having the meetings to let everybody know, hey, Everything's running 100%. I don't have no problem. I don't have no crisis. I wish to see that before the day I retire. So that everything runs like a sewing machine. So, Charles, does the emergency coordinator for the county, does that person have any, any involvement in what you're talking about tonight, or is that not part of, not part of the solution? No, sir. Uh, I mean, I sent out emails, phone calls, text messages. I invited everybody in the county. No, I no that's what I'm saying. But as uh, far as the EMS part of it, no, I don't think the EM really okay. tangles in that. Okay. Uh, it, it really falls back on to the ESD boards uh, and, and the county uh, as far as that, but more or less the ESD boards. Uh, I mean, they're the ones that's, that's got to go and manage the, the house. Uh, so, I mean, but like I say, it's, I'm gonna put it in big bold letters. This has got to stop. I don't know how, I can't be nice about it, but I'm not gonna be. I mean, it's got to stop. Uh, so, I mean, the Allegiance come through town. I see a backup unit sitting across the street over there. I like what I'm seeing. I mean, sometimes if you uh, put a little heat on somebody, stuff changes, but I'm not gonna run out of gasoline this time. I'm going to keep the heat on everybody. Mm -hmm. that, that thing he was talking about, about a paper, kind of, you know, briefly giving some things and maybe some solutions in that. If we had that and, we, and it was down at the, put over at the dollar store and then a, a, a gas station and then when we have the soup kitchen down here, you know. So people, they're not going to come and they're not going to pay attention just need something that people can read and yeah. say, oh, like okay, a news, a news this, letter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like and, a and, and you, you yes. made a good point there, Gwen. Nobody's going to pay attention until it's your family member laying there. Right. And that's when they're going to pay attention and that's when they're going to want to throw a fit. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late. And, and that's, when I, that's why they need to be involved in your community. I'm very involved in this community. Even though fire department, Masonic Lodge, everything, I'm involved in my community. I know just about everybody that lives in my district know where their houses are because I've been involved for many years and I'm going to stay involved. Yes, sir. I think one of the things that, one of the points that he did bring out that was interesting was, okay, they just had the bond issue in Newton County that didn't pass because he, the way he explained, nobody wants their taxes to go up. That's right. I mean, bad on those taxes. But the way he explained it was with those sale tax, where they generated over a million dollars down there in Buna? Yes, sir. That's the way to go. Yes, sir. If you would get the sale tax passed and you can generate that with people coming through, a lot of traffic goes through Newton County, around that courthouse, 
A lot of traffic collects. You see, it's parked down and people have all the time. They are buying stuff, they're spending money, they get the tax. Nobody question me and say, the tax is on this, so they just pay to go on about their business. That's a good way to get that money to help the ambulance service. Yes, sir. People are hard on those taxes. And they say, my, I don't know my taxes. That's the main thing that came up in the meeting that we was having up in New County. We wanted to get the, the work done at the courthouse and to get the jail improved because they need that. They do. Bad. But people don't want to pass no bond issue, but they don't want their taxes to go up. Yes, and I can understand that. But sale tax, you pay that fast, you won't even. Two or three, four, five, six, seven pennies, you ain't worried about that. Yes, sir. But with your property taxes, you, you and, concerned and, about that. And that's a very good point. And, and I, I've been I've been talking back and forth with Jamie about the, the sales tax bill. And uh, I, I guess we might have to figure out the legal way to have the election for it, but I'm all for it. Uh, I mean, my little department down here, whether you know it or not, I mean, most people don't know it, but up until this past year, I operated on $14,000 a year. I'm one of the busiest stations in this county, besides Trap Creek. We operated on $14,000 a year. And we make it happen. I mean, if we want something, we get out and earn it. We get out of that stop sign, we raise our money if we need something. Uh, but the sales tax would way, way help us. That's I mean, a good way to go. Uh, it, well, it not is. only that, you're getting, us, you're getting the, the residents that aren't necessarily landowners, too. So, and, and, and yeah, I mean. And is there any way you could cite, when we're talking about the sales and use tax, is there any way you could cite that it might help the property taxes go down? That's right. Because it, the thing that keep that like he's talking about the very first thing was your property taxes are going up and everybody went nope that's right nope. so there, there's better ways to handle that i mean jamie explained it pretty damn good you did uh, i mean if i could add real quick if you don't mind the uh newton county government itself can impose a half cent sales tax at the government level the county government level and you can earmark that it, the intent is to offset property taxes, but if you do that, there's a period of time where you have to freeze property taxes, where they can't be raised. But you can go up to the county government itself. So maybe county does it, Tyler County does it. I mean, that's a, I don't know where you're at with your ad valorem tax, but if you are not looking to raise your ad valorem tax anytime soon, and you want to implement that tax countywide, I guess in theory, you could, you could earmark that money or EMS, it's a possibility. But know that you can go up to a half cent the new county government itself, but you just have to freeze property taxes. Let's say sure. Yeah, you know, we talked a couple of months ago on this, and, and my project that I've been working on is documenting all of it. We can put it in uh, common terms to get the information out on all the different avenues and um, uh, as well as the problem. Uh, but we're having a snapshot of everything that we need to be thinking about, looking at, and as well as informing the public, because that's the key. It is. is community involvement. Know exactly what's going on. I mean, if, if you're not letting your community know what's going on, I mean, every county is the same way. It's clickish. You got this other group out over there. That ain't the way it should be. We all humans. We all grown. We need to work together and solve this problem. Uh, and if it was passing a sales tax, it's going to help everybody uh, as far as merge server district in this county. It needs to happen. I mean, it's proven. And all that, you also put in there all the, <clears throat> put all the punters, all the fishermen, they come in and all the people that come from all over the state will be contributing. That's right. If you put that on your your deal so that people will understand that. It's not just going to be us That's getting right. that sales tax. It's going to be all these people that come up here and use stuff. You know, uh, and I mean, one, one, one thing about that, you know, we talked, the prison was mentioned. A lot of that is, it's not just, yeah, we need it. We need this money. We need this money. It's what are you going to do with it? Yes. That was that was the biggest thing about it. We need to move me. Well, what are you going to do with it once you get it? So I, I just don't fall into that trap again. You know, before you go out and say, well, we need to do this, we need this money, you need to identify, like you have, we're going to go to the sole provider, it's going to cost this much money. So before you just say, we need to get the money, figure out what 
you need to do with the money and then say, okay, if we have this plan, it's going to cost this much money. Now we'll go get the money. So follow what Jasper's done. And, and we created a strategic plan in advance of the election, and we defined four very specific points that we were going to address. And we hit the ground running. We've already got number one out of it. It's done. And we've only been collecting the sales tax for a year. Number one is done, finished, and accomplished. Number two is well underway. So my advice would be develop that same strategic plan and decide where that money's going to go. We passed our sales tax election in November of 2020 election. Think about what happened in November of 2020. We had a presidential election. Every piece of advice I got said, do not put that on the November ballot no matter what you do. The May election, May of 2020 election was canceled because of COVID, not canceled, postponed in November. We had to work extra hard to educate the public, and we worked incredibly hard to make that happen. And Steve Stewart with KJAS here on one of the radio shows one day, the analogy I used about the dollar candy bar, it came from him. And I was on the radio going in depth and at length to explain what this meant and how to address it. And he said, so basically he told me that a dollar candy bar is going to cost a dollar eight instead of a dollar six. And I thought, man, I really just burned up a lot of energy to address it. And he just, I mean, anybody can understand that, you know. So for two cents more, you can get all this money and solve all these problems. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it works, but you got to educate. Yeah, like and that's one of the things that we work on in the, pub, the paper that I published will have all that in there, where there won't be no ambiguity, where no one can get misinformation on what we're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not going to hide anything from nobody. I mean, I'm dead. I'm not going to do it. Uh, if I know something that, that about the habits or what we're doing or, or whatever in the community, I'm going to put it out there. The community needs to know what's going on. Uh, I'm just, I'm just straightforward. That's the way it needs to be. Community needs to know what's going on. Uh, Chief, can I, can I give a little information ahead, when it's time to, to kind of go over the expenses, how much it uh -huh. costs for the ambulance? Do you mind at some point? No, come on. Jason, you can. Correct me on anything that I'm off on. I just want to give y'all a little bit of it. with the lead. So I'm Justin, the Vice President of Allegiance. So I just want to give y'all information on the ambulance side. Um, there's not a contractor here, and I'm glad y'all are doing what you're doing. We, we've got to get this under control. I agree with you. An ambulance cost me around $135,000 to $150,000 just for the ambulance. The monitor owner cost me about $40,000. Stretcher cost me about $15,000. The payroll cost me about $700,000 to $800,000 for that one ambulance, just for the payroll for the staff. It cost me about one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 for one dispatcher to dispatch that ambulance. I say one dispatcher, one dispatcher 24 hours a day. So when we, we say that, the volume, y'all's population is around 12,000, 13,000 for the whole county, is that, is that right? Right now. 12, 13,000 for the whole county population? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere in there, we close. It went up. Um, <clears throat> you know, y'all are getting around a little over fifty percent of the volume. You know, that we would have to have. We're not a greedy company. We're not trying to get out there and make a whole bunch of money. But, but I am a business, and I have to make money at the end of the day. I don't have to get rich off of it, but I can't lose money. I'm not a tax entity. Tax entities can take money from the taxpayers and and run on loss. I can't run on loss. Right now. We're, we're doing a little over 50% of the number of transports that it would cost to be able to break even. Okay? So if I was to put one truck over here with the total number of calls that we've been doing over here, I'm only, I'm, I would only collect about 50, 56%. I'm just doing math in my head, y'all. You know, napping math. So it ain't even close to being right, but somewhere in there. To, to, so it. I, you know, I'm not even getting halfway if I was to put a truck here 24 hours. So I, I want to explain to y'all, yes, we're trying to cover y'all the best we can from, from Jasper to same as Acadian. Um, but it's also going to have to take what y'all are working on to get where y'all need to be. I 100% agree. Y'all need to be there. One of the things that we've done since, since the last month is I'm in the process of interviewing dispatchers in Jasper. We'll have a dispatch center in Jasper. They'll dispatch the Newton Jasper area trucks. We are staffing at least four trucks all the time for the Jasper Newton area. When all the trucks are available, when the truck comes over and posts the Newton. But 90% of the volume or more is from the Jasper area. So 
when that system status, when those trucks start going down, this truck may have to go back to Jasper to cover, just because that's more of the center, the closer to the location of the population where those trucks go. So I just wanted to give you all a little information so, so you all understood where we're coming from. We, we got the radios on the trucks, and I'm doing all this in, in preparation of, who knows, what, what if they don't vote on it? What, what if it doesn't fall through? I want to fix it what I can, when I can, until it's fixed right. So I am making strides in, in the right direction, I believe. I'm trying to put a, a best effort into it on my side. I also have the unknown. What's going to happen in the month? What if I'm not the provider? I'm not looking at that right now. I'm just looking at what I can do now to try to fix the problem. Working with Chief, working with the Chief, the Sheriff, and, and all the county officials. So anybody got any questions for me? And, and it's great to appreciate it. Uh, but I just wanted to get y'all some, you know, it, it costs a lot for those ambulances, and a lot of people don't realize that. What's your total cost just for one unit to run? I'm sorry? Total I'm, cost for the state for just say for one unit to run. One unit, total cost. Total cost. Jason, what do you say, around a million? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it'd be about a million dollars a year on the park right here. For, for yeah, one truck? For one unit. Just one, for unit. one truck? Yes. That's for, for one year? For, I mean, that's just what it costs to, to operate. Yeah, that was it. Me and us. And that, that, that's, and I would say that's on the, that's on the conservative side. Even again, like I said earlier, <coughs> the calls that we're running, we're only collecting 5%. So the other 95% falls on the ambulance That's right. And, and, and just like I said when I said that, we can't expect these two groups to survive. When 95% of them is not getting paid, they're not getting paid for 95% of them. I understand that. I mean, that's, you can't do it. I wouldn't work for free. No, you can't work for free. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I understand. I'm doing it now because I retired. I mean, I'm not doing it. Another thing that I wanted to bring up is that, you know, even if you have an ambulance sitting here, throughout the day in Beaumont, Texas, uh, which is a government entity, EMS, uh, they go level zero multiple times a day. They don't have ambulances. So whatever we do, there are going to come times when you're still going to have to wait for an ambulance. And I, I, for us to stand here and you're not going to be happy, I'm not going to lie. Yes. Well, it, 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 and we, under, we understand that. Uh, but that's what I talked about earlier. Be truthful. Tell me the truth. Communicate. Don't beat around the bush. I promise you, i got big shoulders that I, I can take it. Tell me the truth. If it's going to be 45 minutes, tell me. If I ain't got an ambulance, tell me. We'll, we'll make preparation differently. Uh, and I'm gonna get this young lady to tell you how we're gonna do that. Uh, so. uh, one more thing. I know that I get the Newton County News, but not everybody gets the Newton County News. So they're not getting all this information. So when you're talking about a newsletter going out the, the to, sheriff. Sheriff, uh, to everybody, not just yeah, the Newton County News. I'm gonna do a report and submit it to the and that's going to be public. It's going to be a public session. And it's going to be highly publicized. And we, you know, we but not just in it, because Nick can Now, we, we don't, we don't, we use all, all forms of media when we publish stuff like that. Uh, Tracy, do you have something? Yeah, so when y'all say 95% is a loss, is that like an insured loss? Or is that just people not paying? Or, you know, well, does no one make up for that? Like, right. I mean, we, we live in a low-income county, no doubt. 90% uh, 90, 90 of the people don't have insurance because of 911. Okay. Well, if they don't have insurance, I mean, probably don't have the money to pay the ambulance bill, but they, got, they need an ambulance ride. They got to get on it. So that's, the, that's what we're trying to figure out is how we can keep them in business for the ones that don't pay the ambulance bill. So that's a problem. So is there anything as, like, Is there like a, like a grant program that could be in? Obviously, uh, there's not any grant program. No. For EMS. Some of the hospitals fall into some uncompensated trauma funds the hospitals get, but, but it's not something that's on the free hospital side. One of the contributing things that, that falls into that not being able to play, you know, we only collect about 30% of what we bill. It, it falls into much of different things. Medicare, Medicaid, they're only going to pay you to set them at $6 right. a mile. I, I say that, I don't remember the exact number, it's not my job, but. They only set you, you can go whatever you want, you're only going to pay That's very it. minimal. And a lot of times, if we use a lot of medication,
medications, they're not going to pay us for each one of the medications. They give a flat rate and so much a mile. We may use a $1,500 drug. I may only collect it $300 on that because that's all Medicare says I don't get. Same thing with the doctor. Some of them allow you to build the patient. Some of them, depending on your contract, you can't build them. But the other big piece of that is everybody has a deductible now. Even your Medicare patients have deductible. So the first thing we do is go take it to the hospital. You got a $2,000 deductible. Our ambulance bill says $1,500. I'm not saying that's how much it is. I say $1,500. Well, that automatically, your insurance, your insurance is not going to pay me anything. It's up to you to pay me your deductible. You wouldn't believe the number of people who's not going to pay that and deductible. You, and you can't, there's not a, you have to take them to court. I have and to take it's them not to court, work. and it would cost me more money, but more than likely not build it. I can't start. Oh, that, that's why. That's why. From perspective, for, for people, it, it, even before I got in the business, it's not something that you would normally see. It's not something that you would you would understand. Well, I think that would help everybody understand how that you explain it like that, because a lot of people sit down and don't explain how the insurance works outside of just getting your medical. So, I mean, it it boils down to we got to get something in writing. We got to figure out how we're going to pay these guys. That way, we make sure we got 24-hour coverage. Uh, because if we don't, we I mean, we took four more steps back. I'm ready to go that way, not that way. I mean, plain and simple. Uh, you want to? Get up and talk about your little bill over there, rescue. Yep. Uh, got air, air rescue. We laid them pamphlets out. I'm a member of it. Uh, I wish everybody in this room was a member of that. Uh, it's very affordable and it's very good. Uh, and I'm gonna let her explain it. She can explain <laughs> it a whole lot better than I can. But if you can afford it, y'all need to be on that plan. Uh, it's a it's a good plan. Thank you. Hi, thank you for having me here. My name is Susan Steele and I'm with Southeast Texas Air Rescue. Uh, and I'm on the membership side, so I don't really do a lot of uh, insurance and that kind of stuff. This is a membership. This is not insurance. So uh, we have 350 bases across 38 states. So this membership covers you, whether you're at home or in Colorado on vacation. Um, our number one goal, of course, is to save lives. But we also, this provides prepaid medical transport. So the way the membership works is if you're 60 or over, it's $65 a year. And that covers your entire household, you, your spouse, your kids. If Aunt Betty's living there, it covers her too. Grandma covers her too. If you're under 60, it's $85 a year. And what they do is they simply bill whatever insurance you have, if you have insurance. They will bill and take that payment. But you will not see a bill. So we don't, we don't do percentages like insurance companies. Because it's, it, it's not insurance, it's membership. So you will not see a bill. So it's really affordable you know I mean they were just talking about how expensive ambulance rides are well air ambulance is like you know but if you need it you need it and we have um, a base in Jasper we have helicopters in Jasper we and they can be here in Newton County 12 to 15 minutes by air we have helicopters in Beaumont Kinder, Winsboro, Louisiana, Crockett, they also can be here, depending on which one's coming. Beaumont can be here in 30 minutes. Uh, they all support each other. And basically what the membership does, the membership fees basically support your local base. Um, you know, it helps keep it here and helps keep the people here. So pretty much that's it. Does anybody have any questions? So if you if you are a member, right, what if what if one so this is your company, what about one of the other one of the other helicopters picks you up? Are you still covered? How does that work? 
Uh, we don't. But, you know, here, um, the only other helicopters you're going to have to call them to come. Is it out of Houston? Yes. So yes. all of these are your. your That's uh, right. Okay. It's all this company. This is really 100% of my flights. Yeah. Whatever. You get picked up here, it's us. Okay. And our pilots are great, and our nurses are great. Um, they do everything they can for you. They're there just to hold your hand, too, because you're really scared. You got something? Yeah. Uh, you got to meet me in, in the lobby in the sheriff's office on uh, May 4th, right? Uh-huh. Uh, 3 30. Mm hmm. I'll probably get there before that. Yeah, I actually come and I told my people about it. It's a, it's a, it's a good program. I mean, I've been a member of it for four, five, six years now. Uh, we pay it every year religiously. You don't uh, ever know when you're going to need them. Uh, yeah, and this alleviates the problem of uh, paying deductibles and paying, you know, co pays. It's if you have this membership, you will not get a bill. Period. Covers your, your entire household. But, but on the flip side of that, which I'm a member uh -huh. for four or five years, uh -huh. but on the, on the flip side of that, also, if you're like the ambulances, sometimes you're not available. Well, I mean, we have. The truth. We have five bases. We have Jasper, Beaumont, Kinder, Crockett, and Winsboro. They all support each other, so I mean, there would have to be five extremely severe, you know, things happen. And I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying people need to know that. Yes. But I would highly recommend everybody to have. You know, if if all five are really busy, if it gets really bad and they're all really busy, then you're going to have to wait for one to come out of Houston to get you. Yes. Uh, and, and the flight time from Kinder to my helipad is 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. 35, 36 minutes. Mm -hmm. What it takes from, from Kinder. Mm -hmm. Beaumont, for about 20, something, 25. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, a lot of what we're talking about, um, you know, when they pick you up, you usually go to Jasper first and maybe get stabilized. But then you need a higher level of care. This is included in that. There's no charge for them to haul you to Houston or to Galveston or to Shreveport, wherever you need to go. That was my next comment. Mm -hmm. If I had to go from Jasper to Houston, there's no, no extra pay. No extra? And no, well, you won't get a bill at all. Are you familiar with Vasa? That's another deal like this. I am, a little bit. Uh, we're providing that to Jasper County. Are you? Yeah, I work for the county precinct too. Mm -hmm. That's the call. Mm -hmm. And they provide it to us. Yeah, um, you were correct. I'm sorry? Houston. It was a Herman helicopter. Herman helicopter. It was a Herman helicopter, no, okay. That was a Herman helicopter. Okay. So, MASA, um, I know they're in a lot of places, but their helicopters also come from, you know, I mean. Well, the way we were told, Whatever helicopter company was, they does it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Whatever helicopter company it was that picked us up, they cover it. That, that's what they say. I would encourage everybody to read the fine print and in, in your because I really don't know about right. them. Yes, ma'am. Am I reading this right? Okay, I'm almost over sixty-five. Over sixty. They yeah, start out early. I'm telling you, I'm over 65. Okay. And that okay. Uh, and then, and I, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I'm old now. <laughs> so if I went like the three years, I would just, I would get paid you $565 and it would cover me for three years. Is that what this is saying? I'm reading this one. Um, five years. Three years, three and senior, and the emergent plus non-emergent is five sixty-five. That's what I would pay That's you, right. and I'm covered for three years. That's right. Now, right now, they're giving gift certificates. So if you do a one year, it's fifteen dollars. If you do a three year, it's thirty-five. If you do a five year, it's fifty. If you do a ten year, it's seventy-five. 
Now, that is 75 for the emergent. And if you include the fly you home in, that's another 75 for it. So you, those would be mailed to you after your membership was received. That's just something they're doing right now. For how long? I was going to check my um, I, They never tell us. I mean, probably, probably another So if I feel, do you, do you have a line? I did. Right on the front of this. Uh -huh. On the front of this is my phone number. And my email address, everything, and you can reach me anytime. Um, but I didn't tell you about the Fly You Home. That's an extra component of it. On, on the inside page, it says $219, and I told you $65 and $85. But the $219 comes in where it's, it's a component called Fly You Home. So say you are in New Mexico, hunting or whatever, and you have an accident or you have a heart attack. They take you to a hospital to stabilize you, and you want to come back home and recover at a hospital close by. That's what Fly You Home is. They will go get you, and they will fly you home. We have helicopters, but we also have fixed wing aircraft, so we can go really anywhere. We we actually have international planes. If anyone would ever be interested, you can buy them. In 14 day increments, if you're just going to Paris for a vacation, you can buy $14 days worth of coverage. So I see it as additional members, uh, like my son. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is there a limit on the household on how many? No. Okay. No, and if, if, they, if, if kids are away at college, it covers them too. Any other questions? Jason, Justin, y'all got anything that you want to add? Y'all good? Thank you. 